He ducked into another alley, this one empty, aside from a donkey and a muttering drunk. Two asses. <gasps> it's a, Get it? Because donkeys are sometimes called asses? Soon the dirt path to his wait, village. wait, wait. I don't, I don't think you understood that joke, Katie, because you didn't laugh. Soon, Sometimes. The that's because it's not funny. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Unresolved Textual Tension. I'm Katie, and I am here with only one co host today, and that is William. William, rugged and handsome. That's me. She didn't put it in there, but I think we all know. I don't that. have, I don't, I don't get the claim. I don't get that. Now, what are we here to do today, Katie? We're doing something a little different today. Um, and I think you'll really enjoy it. I am super stoked. Uh, we are going to be reading a chapter of Savior's Champion. By Jenna Moresi. And I have not read this before. So we're essentially doing ye old. um, uh, how are we going to say this? Ye old college course uh, style um, where we are going to read the chapter and actively respond to it. And of course, since this is new for me, you guys will get all of my very raw reactions. Yes. Um, you know, what happened is that uh, we had, I screwed up the dates of what book we were reading. This <laughs> so this is really why. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Maria um, was like, I could take the week off. That'd be fine. And so I was like, all right, let's do something that doesn't require reading. And I was like, oh, me and Katie both review, uh, critique things uh, professionally. Uh, you can get mine through the Patreon tier. And Katie's through, you have a website, right? Yes. Thank you, William. Um, I'll put it, it is... in the, just. I'll link it in the description. But what is yes. it? Yes. Yes. It's beta reading by Katie at gmail.com mine would be alpha reading because i'm an alpha or maybe sigma reading that would be mine you're a beta uh, <laughs> such a no. terrible joke yeah. um so, no, yeah as long as one of us isn't omega reading um so what happened is i screwed up the dates, so we decided to do this and i was like oh me and katie have been wanting to show how we critique things for a while now um and i was like oh but i don't want to do one of our own writings because i'm too sensitive for that and i was like okay let's do one of the terrible books we read and this one he just doesn't want to show off how good I'm, of a writer he is. It's because if he could actually finish something, he wouldn't be here right I, now. I finished a lot of fanfic. <laughs> that, um, as we all know, that doesn't quite... I'll, actually, it could count. It could count. It, can, it counts. I just don't want to share it with people. I'm not. Again, I'm not that secure in my masculinity. You know, we all know how much you love this series, so we figured this would be a good one to start with. And again, Katie hasn't read it. I have read it. Um, there's a prologue, but we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be doing the first chapter. I want to note that this is not really for the author's sake. Usually when you're writing a critique, you write it for the author to look at and make changes. This is not really that. So like usually I'm a lot, I'm going to be a lot more um, polite Comedic. if I'm doing this for somebody else. Whereas now I'm really not going to hold back on my feelings because she's not going to watch this. And again, it's mostly to show you guys how we do something. Um, one thing I do want to note is that my critiques are probably going to start off a little bit unspecific and diffuse because that always happens to me when I'm critiquing something. Um, it takes a little bit for my brain to go, okay, this is the problem exactly, and to switch on and figure out what it is. Um, this is one of the reasons I don't usually do a line-by-line -line critique. I usually just note overall problems and show examples of it in another doc, um, because I find it just very repetitive to continually explain the problem that they have, just do it once. Um, I'm not sure how Katie does it. She has like a different style. A little bit more razzle dazzle. We'll see. I I do line by line for the most part. However, uh, William is correct. It's um I happen to accidentally fall into the issue of I will see something in a line and it's still a problem nonetheless. But then about a paragraph down, I'll see what was supposed to be happening, and so my question will now be void, and now it'll expand into a bigger issue even. Um, so oftentimes I'll go back and I'll edit my previous line, which is a waste of time, but. I mean, that doesn't matter right now. So but just bear uh, that in mind as we're going through. And we're going to try to keep this relatively short. Um, and, you know, uh, if you like this, join our Patreon. We have a book club um, where we, you guys get to pick which books we do once a month. And we do it as a live stream. So we get a lot of comments and stuff like that. It's been a lot of fun. And it's been doing quite well. We do have quite a bit of people. And honestly, the majority of the people there are, of course, as you might expect, not just readers, but writers. And I, they seem not necessarily from us, but from each other, seem to be building a community that's really supportive and very helpful in their writing efforts. So here's what we're going to do. I have cool technology, which allows us to see on oh. screen. Oh okay. my God, 
William, how positively cool. futuristic of you. Right. We can um, do comments. We can actually also do that thing where you're doing an editing instead of a... Oh, how do you do that? <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> there's, there's a way to do it so that it, you give suggestions. Yes, not... you go up here. What we'll do is um, we'll read this out loud as we go, probably. And I'll probably just edit out the parts where we don't actually say... Um, where we're not actively talking about the writing. Oops. So, you know, if you want to find this, uh, you know, you can find this online. I would not pay money for it um, because this book is terrible, but. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> so go ahead and why don't you read the first paragraph? Okay. Katie. The swish of the sickle echoed in his ears. Oh, I already hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I do How too, many let's times? Get through, let's get through the paragraph first. Everyone, everyone who isn't visually engaged with this, it's the onomatopoeia we're about to get that seems to repeat itself many times. Anyway, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, everyone. The swish of the sickle echoed in his ears. Swish, swish. The rhythm endless. Monotonous. It would have been enough to lull him to sleep. But fortunately, the labor kept this fo his focus. And if that ever failed, there was always the blistering heat to pique his nerves. God, he could have used a breeze, but the air remained perfectly still and the sun continued to beat down on him like fire. It was a torture he'd never grown accustomed to, even after two years in this line of work. That is the most basic introduction. <laughs> all right, let's talk about a couple of things. Uh, first of all, Echoed does not make sense if you're in a field. Maybe she's Are trying we to in say a cavern. No, but hey, look, maybe she's just trying I to say. I understand. I know that it's a repetitive. That it is a repetitive. It's but echoed is not the right description. Ears, but it doesn't match the setting uh, environment. Yeah. That later on, I can already see it because it stands out a lot. There is another. Oh, oh my God! There's four more times um there's several times where this swish swish happens and we'll see if it's actually effective because you know i i can't just straight up say that that can't be an effective way of writing but man that just yeah i can um so the rhythm endless uh, monotonous i don't love this beginning i feel like it's very generic and it also it is. is not very evocative of place but i can't quite put my finger on exactly how i would tell a writer to fix it yet so i'll just think about it um, i would tell you right now the problem with this is that so you know you know the idea of um like the beats in narration how there's like you know there's like you know the rhythm of a narration and how it goes where you have the staccato of the the one word period one word period long yeah. so this beginning is incredibly common i will already tell you how many things I have read, which it, I mean, is a lot at this point, as you know, you are one mm -hmm. of those as well. This is a very common beginning when it comes to a pacing, which is there's again, nothing wrong with that, but it's not going to stand out. No, I understand. Um, we also start with a couple of other things. I don't like the sun continue to beat down on him like fire. Fire doesn't beat down on things. Fire don't beat down. A and better... also description and i'm not coming up with this on the top of my head this is one i use quite commonly uh would be um a, a couple one i've used a couple times is the uh oh shit i can't think of it now what are you thinking of describe it oven weight is sometimes one i used the oh um, you mean like how the heat's like an oven hmm? whereas uh, fire is just like you think of a fire like it kind of moves around like if um Somebody slashes you. That's like, like fire. A line yeah. of fire. That makes sense. But fire is not, it's not all encompassing. It doesn't feel heavy on your shoulders. It doesn't feel like it's beating down on you. It's not or a great radiating. Like a yeah, radiator. Yeah, radiating would have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, just this phrase in general. Uh, again, you can't be that creative. Not everything can be brand new. But the sun continued. Oh, look, adjective. Let's cut that. But the Her, air remains hey, steel. technically, perfectly. technically adverb, if we want to be. Oh, whatever the thing on. Stephen King says you shouldn't have. Also, we already have a problem. Grown accustomed to formal, dry, mm -hmm. not yeah. fantasy. But you know what's also awful is that I don't like the idea in the second line where it says it would have been enough to lull him to sleep if he's in torture. Why would he yeah. be lulled to sleep by this torturous 
monotonous. Like, um, I can understand if you're reading a book and it's a book you've already read and or yes. a book you don't want to read. It's because you're just sitting still. He is using a sickle. Uh, I don't think you're going to fall asleep doing this. I also don't think fortunately needs to be there. But the labor kept his focus. Um, focus is unspecific. Focus uh, on one what? Of the things. Well, focus is just as a word is not super. Okay, so my mom has this thing. <sighs> my mom is one of the greatest critics um, that she doesn't like the word thing because it's unspecific. Focus is also kind of abstract. Um, kept his focus. Uh, a better word there, I can't think of right now, but I would come up with one over time. But the uh, labor. This is also. Somebody is going to, in the comments, be like, well, you didn't come up with a better one all the time. Yeah, I didn't spend hours and hours looking at this. My job is to tell the writer what the problem is. And if I can, tell them how to fix it. But that's not necessarily a thing I can handle, I can do on a first pass. And it's also not necessarily in my job description. Well, also, um, that's not something that I think a writer should want from you. I think a writer should be able to spitball with you and discuss it like if you truly want some recommendation for some like solutions to how you could replace it you sit you talk or you type whatever and you mm -hmm. discuss what is it that you're looking for and then give a small example of what you don't want it to do or what you do want it to do or something like that that's just really basic but you can't fill the words for the author they need to experiment read other books and do those things because it's not it might solve that line, but it's not going to solve the continued problem. Right. I liked, yeah, no, like I wouldn't do this every single time, but I like sometimes to give an example of like, mm -hmm. if I can think of it, a way that I would fix it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I already, I hate so much of this paragraph. Wait, which okay. part are you trying to? Uh... Uh, I, th this is a problem I run into actually when editing is when something is too bad, I get overwhelmed by the amount of things in it that need to be fixed uh, because it's just, I don't, I can't figure out how to fix like all these problems at once. Um, and that's, you know, that's on me as a, as an editor. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even start with the sound of the sickle. I would have been started off with uh, like something along the lines of, and I'm not going to be super fancy, but um, like the strain on, is it his or mine? Uh, uh, his, my, his. The pull of his muscles across his back ached as he swung or whatever motion you want to use, swung the sickle um, in an endless rhythm, if you wanted to use, or an endless, or the, yeah, something like that, in the, uh, something to the effect of what sh this person already has, girl, person, she. Right, like, um, to be honest, I would not even keep the sickle part, I think that's kind of stupid, um, but yeah. Well, using the sickle as the fact that, oh, I am using oh, okay. a sickle as a tool. At some point, you'd want to, like, reference that, but I, the very first thing when I think of manual labor is two things. If you're outside in the heat, one, my muscles aching and hurting from the repetitive movement and the I have done a lot neck. of physical labor. I'm Hispanic. Um, yeah, no, <laughs> shut up. Will. Actually, honestly, heat is probably the thing my mind would go to first. That's the second. Second is heat. First is how badly my neck and arms would hurt with the strain of keeping it straight keeping it in the same motion and going forward. Oh, that's that. actually a really good uh, a, a little detail is this. Yeah, because you have to keep yourself straight as you go. That would be mm. a better physicality thing to embody. And maybe... part of the problem is that this doesn't really make any sense. So you don't feel like you're, you, you don't have that. Physicality, the, the rawness of the moment, the harshness of the moment, that uh, more intimate feelings that you know you would feel in that moment. You have the basics, which is the sun, and the sickle and that's it the sun and the sickle yes and so that's a good um, way of uh, yeah yeah that's nice um but no seriously though um and the thing you could argue is let's say oh well this man is used to manual labor maybe maybe he's used to the pain okay then he's used to the pain but the point is then is then you highlight that the muscles ached but it still swung uh but my muscle like something to the effect of his muscles almost were like in a groove you know what i mean like it's a practice mm -hmm. motion but something to the effect like it's like i just it just is happening but slowly but surely the tension is building up over time and it's like uh, whatever it doesn't matter you could do yeah. so much also you know it would be a good line son sickle switch. yeah ah, ha, 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 ha. Okay, no, not the not the second. No, I hate that. I hate it. All right, fine, fine, Katie. 
I guess I am a better writer than you. All right, we should move on from this first paragraph. Um, Because again, at that point, we just need to start rewriting all of it. So <laughs> harsh breath, this is abstracted. Uh, and that's okay sometimes. Certain words in English don't have an unabstracted version of them. Uh, but something like with a rasping, that's better. Or spitting his last breath. I like that because whenever I finish breath. something, I almost like, especially like, so I'm doing the lawn or something, right? And let's say I'm dying, which doesn't, you know, take much. And I'm finally done. I usually like kind of like, like I, um, I spit out all the salty sweat dirt and grime that's in my mouth. And you could also literally not even a breath. You could literally just hawk a loogie, but not say hawk a loogie. <laughs> he spat to the side something like that. He dropped a sickle and ripped. That is a, a, a more specific word, but it also doesn't really make a lot of sense. Ripping um, is this, not grabbing. Also, the shirt is really soaked, so it should be something more like slipped, maybe, or slid. Yeah. Slid his shirt. You can't do it over. You don't want to overdo it. So he dropped his sickle and slid his shirt from its resting place around his neck. From around his neck. You don't need its resting place. No, you don't. It's redundant. Too many words. Uh, the fabric was sopping wet. Eh, I don't love the fabric. I would have just said it was sopping wet, but okay, we can keep it. But he mopped his head with it anyway, then flung it over his shoulder. Um, I would... But that's such a, that's a, so there's not, okay, look, there's nothing. Really, I don't think we're going to get through the whole chapter, guys. Okay, listen, listen. There's nothing really actually wrong with that. But if you think about the action of this, yes, on screen, it would look good. But when you are writing this, it's such a cyclical nature of actions. So he, like, why did we describe that? You ask yourself, why did you take yeah, the time and fill the space? What's the purpose of showing that? We already know that he's sweaty, probably, from all the heat in the work. Again, that's fine. Also, wait a second. It's a swish swish after he's done. No, then he flung it over his shoulder again. One assumes he picked up the sickle. All right, two other things um, from his neck. Basically, what? right here, it should be that Okay, so when you take something off of your neck that's been wet, it automatically is kind of cool right after. So yes. I would add something about that. I don't know necessarily how I would phrase that. Again, um, it's not my job to write this um, it, to, and to know what it, the exact verbiage would be uh, with his neck. Um, the breeze, the breeze kissing the moist. Uh, oh, like if you want to be real extra, the, the yeah. breeze kissing, uh, kissing the spot where it left. I'm literally just going to put that. back of neck should be wet and therefore cool cooler now. than the rest of the body yeah then flung it over his over his shoulder with a slap yeah i like the be slap idea because that's what happens when you hit something that's wet but in general i'm not even necessarily sure that there's something i don't like about but he mopped his head with it anyway just uh, say he mopped his head with it who cares that it's wet anyway like it's trying to infer that even though it's wet he used it anyway but why does that matter right and i also think that there's something just very um, basic about this sentence construction that's not very evocative, but I don't necessarily know how I would phrase that. So I probably would just leave it for now. So I think what we should do is we should read the next couple of paragraphs without yeah, right. critiquing Stopping. just so we can get through some of it. I'll read it. Swish, swish. <laughs> Sugarcane stalks plopped his feet with each swipe, tumbling one after the next like dead bodies. It wasn't nearly as grotesque as that, but he had to entertain himself somehow. Cane harvesting was such tedious work, such mindless work. Necessary. It was necessary work. A heap of cane rested in front of him, piled like a pyramid. Oh, God, that's a, such a... Just continue, just continue. He tried to see shapes in his labor, to focus on the rich color of each stock, to see the nicks from his sickle as a signature, to turn his efforts into art. And then he resigned himself into the ban ban banal reality of what he was doing. Swish, Another swish. one! Okay, so we have a couple problems here. We're going to find out later that he is an artiste. Or he was an artiste before this. So this is probably trying to show us that he is trying to turn it into art. So we're informed about his character. I have worked a lot of really hard things. This does not happen if you've been at this for hours. Your mind is in another place entirely. Like you are you are kind of disconnected from what you're doing if you've been working in fields for hours. And this doesn't really reflect it, which is one of the reasons it doesn't really feel, it doesn't really ring true. That's something you would do at the very beginning when you have that mm -hmm. pointed foot. Like, for example, when I was painting these walls at the very beginning, I put the tape all in the right places and I did all this. By the time I go to the second coat, I'm just like, fuck it. And then I'm just like, ah. So the other thing is it's actually kind of nice to do repetitive work if you're a creative person. And I, it can even be kind of nice. 
it is because you get to just think your brain actually goes into kind of a few like a, a just sitting and thinking thing after enough repetitive action like this i just um, get massive anxiety <laughs> Trust me, I've done a lot of physical labor. Um, a uh, lot hey. of times, again, I'm Hispanic. All right, I'm not. I'm I'm legal, but I'm still Hispanic. It's in our blood. Only um, granddaughter that took care of her grandparents' yard when they couldn't. All right. Okay, well, fine. Not fine, how whatever. you would think. Anyway, after... wait. I wanted to say something real quick though while I was thinking about it. Um, okay. I, honestly, like Will's saying though, at this point with having done this work for so long and kind of like detach it. Uh, what what's the word I'm looking for? Dissociating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you dissociate. He should be thinking about his artwork and things he wants to do with his artwork or picturing something about the environment and involving it in whatever that artwork is. So I'm saying not how you would think after hours of labor, semicolon might actually be a nicely meditative state. His mind would be free to think about art. Another semicolon might be nice to have a moment where he has a stoner thought about <laughs> yeah. how he would paint this because that also happens again it's kind of like kind of what he's doing in a way is like the japanese hot baths or whatever also His, um this mm -hmm. entire thing the... it was nearly as grotesque as that but he had to entertain himself how much that doesn't really make any sense get at all. rid of it for the love of god also cane harvesting was such tedious work so much okay so <sighs> repeat the a, mindless work yeah. this is too early so, okay all right hold on i'm i'm skipping through this if we're explaining it cane harvesting was such tedious work such mindless work um Telling. Yep, that's why I just deleted it. Oh, <laughs> uh, you deleted it. Yeah, so... All of the yeah. previous stuff already inferred that it's tedious. Yeah, you should be showing this instead of telling it that's such a basic thing to do. It was necessary work. Ooh, that's kind of foreboding, dude. Sugarcane stalks plopped to his feet with each swipe tumbling one after the next like dead bodies. Necessary. It was necessary work. <sighs> It is, but it's also dorky. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> All right, let's try to let's try to get through more of this. A man scuttled from the distant sugar mill, heading his way. Was it the end of the day already? The ferocious sun was setting, bleeding between the clouds and turning the sky from blue to pink. Yet somehow it was still as sweltering as ever. How is that even possible or fair? Uh, is the man a bug or bug-like? <laughs> so there's a problem here, which is that he should not be able to see this. Yeah, I know. I, I that too. Scuttled is a dumb word because that's uh, no. not how someone. I love the word scuttle, but not for this. <laughs> no, it, 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 how is he scuttled? For our visual watchers oh, or God. listeners, it, that, that would be like the man going like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that doesn't, if he was moving from like shade to shade, that might be he was scuttling from shade spot to shade spot. That might yeah. be scuttling scuttling if he was like ducking under something but like or going side to side because that's what scuttling is scuttled how is he like a bug he is not checkmate um the <laughs> other thing about it is that tobias cannot see this he oh, is cutting me. sugar cane makes no sense he's seeing what's in front of him especially if he is in this moment of focus which he's supposed to be He's looking at the stuff. Like, it doesn't make any sense that he would see. Again, think about it like this. You're like this. You're cutting things at, like, actually below you height because you want to get the stalks at the bottom. You would not see something on a hill above you or even around you. Is it? So it's not omniscient. Bad physicality. No, so it's not an omniscient. Limited. Okay, yeah. So, and for those of you who do not know omniscient or limited, this is a good opportunity to go look it up unless we... I don't want to be a know-it-all, but the point is, is you should know first person, third person, omniscient, third person, limited, and so on. And then second person, I guess, but nobody does that. Except for, you know, fan fiction writers from 20 years ago. Okay, so the ferocious, we're cutting that, that's stupid. Sun was setting, bleeding between the clouds and turning the sky from blue to pink. So there's a problem here, and it's not immediately noticeable because bleeding between the clouds sounds good, but the logic of it isn't. It's the light should be bleeding between the clouds. It should be the the sun was setting like a uh, orange disc behind again the cloud. But again, this is not the best prose. Um, I would usually put something like, for example, put something like this, like an orange disc being a light bleeding between the clouds and turning the sky from blue to pink. I still don't even like turning the sky from blue to pink, but- I mean, honestly, that entire thing is just really lame. We already, well, uh, if it's if it's gonna go, okay, wait a second. Hold on a second. Was, 
was it the end of the day already? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Why is he saying, was it the end of the day already? If he can look up and see the sky. Yeah, that's a good question. He'd be like, ah, it was the end of the day already. Also, by the way, it says, yet somehow it's still as sweltering as ever. That's not true. I've worked labor. What happens is that it seems like towards the end of the day, so like here in Florida, about four, you're like, oh my God, it is so hot. And the last <laughs> gasps of the day, it is beating down upon you. But and then by cool. about like five or six it does cool for about an hour before oh it my god blessedly the breeze comes out a little bit yeah but at four o'clock holy bejesus i want you to imagine opening up an oven at 450 degrees and just sticking your face in there and that's florida at 4 p.m and again there's a moment where at about five where like you can actually feel the heat of the day maturing or maturing yeah. Almost, but then it gets cool. I know, because that's when I walk my dog, is right in the hour before it gets dark. <laughs> Obviously, this changes based off of winter and summer. So my takeaway is that the author has never done any physical labor. For shame upon ye. But this is not how it would be described. Here's the other thing. It feels like he's whining. Like, you've been doing this forever. Calm down. Like, well, it's if you've been doing this day after day, you get used to it. No, Will, look. Look at this. We have now read however many words it is up until like here what is that does it where's the word count wait a second i just want to look word count we have got 310 words and you know what we've gotten the sun is hot and i'm sweaty <laughs> the sun is hot and i'm sweaty yeah, it's a bit much. And again, it's not real. Like if you're really good at physicality, this can work. Um, I remember I read the beginning of Stephen King's The Gunslinger, and that starts from a omniscient point of view where he, he's not in his head and he's just describing what the guy looks like as he's walking. If you're Stephen King, you can kind of get away with something like that for a paragraph or two. You ain't no Stephen King. I was going to say bitch, but I don't mean that towards the author. I just mean that towards readers in general. In yeah, the like that... kind of more like a sassy bitch and again to the readers not to to her okay so and again here how is it even possible or fair calm down calm down you this would not be how you feel about it it's annoying to read whiny characters oh, the man yeah. waved yes work was over and both relief and dread stirred within him he could get in some more work if he had to and he didn't have to and he did have to what oh this and he did sense. oh okay and he did have to. Wait a second. Wait a second. This doesn't actually make sense the way it's written. That's fascinating. It's because I feel like an editor should have caught this unless I'm missing something. The man waved. Yes, work was over. And both relief and dread stood with him. He could get in some more work if he had to. This is too vague. I don't understand if he's saying he could get some more work in with the sickle or he could get some more work in with other things. And he yeah, did have to. Dropping the sickle. So I'm assuming when he drops the that's sickle. That's what I he, thought at the beginning too. Yeah. That that was a, he could get work in somewhere else. That's very confusing. I mean, it does, again, is this like, okay, look, I'm not even going to qualify it with that. It's an issue. Yeah, I'm, I would literally put confusing. Um, also, something as an editor you have to do sometimes is be okay with looking dumb because you literally want it to be books to be idiot proof. And so you can't be worried about like, oh, is the reader going to, is, is the author going to think I'm dumb for not picking up on this? No, you need to, you need to clarify. Yes, exactly. Dropping his sickle, he yanked at the sheath lying by his feet, hoisting a howl, however many sugarcane stalks onto his back. He recalled the first time he had done this, how the weight had felt immeasurable, how he had thought his back would break from the pressure. But now he is stronger, or perhaps the cane was simply lighter. That doesn't make any sense. The cane is not lighter. Recalled is a formal word. Would be better, would be better as felt. Because then it would be... He felt the first time he had done this, how the weight had felt immeasurable. Let me just. I don't know. I like, wait. So you don't like recalled because it's formal saying he remembered. He didn't say he remembered. He recalled. Recalled. Uh, remembered would be better than recalled. But I think he felt. We understand that he's not actually feeling this because a minute later we say the first time he had done this. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Ah. Yeah, I get it. I like to have things that are like slightly like lyrical ish um, and rather than formal in this case. I get it. So this is supposed to be a fantasy world. I don't think you know that, but this is supposed to be like a fantasy Greek esque world. Um, so like we should be getting in a little bit of that. Oh, um, yeah, you wouldn't say recalled. I would expect recalled from something like an academic or a scholar or something. He recalled the first time he introduced himself to her. 
Ah, mm -hmm. Madame, like that. Kind I've been of reading thing. a lot of Temeraire. Uh, Recalled would be a perfectly good world for the British. I see what you mean now when it comes to this. Yeah, yeah. This is something people do a lot. They either use too informal and modern of terms, or they use too formal of terms. Um, and it's like, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, and also again, or perhaps the cane was simply <laughs> lighter. That literally. Uh, wait, who is this again? Who's the author? Jenna Moresi. Wasn't she like one of the ones that does a YouTube thing? Oh, you don't know this. She is like the number one self-published YouTube um, advice person. Yeah. Yeah. And this is her second book, her the beginning of the current trilogy she's on. Yeah, I mean, it is I, amazing. It's that she's successful, but this is ridiculous. And what's hilarious is we're not even fixing all these issues as we're going. We're trying to get through this a little bit faster. And also, again, this is a problem I have that I need to figure out as an editor is how to fix things that are basically all bad. <laughs> so. Okay, no, no. So I, you know what I've learned from that? It's because uh -huh. I had somebody come to me and I did a really, it wasn't a big piece, um, but the problem was so pervasive. It was in every other paragraph. And at that point, that is a core issue with your skill as a writer. And mm. it's really hard. Um, it was hard for this person to acknowledge it, but mm. that's fine. I understand why. It's very frustrating. And you you think like it's 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 very hard to it, again, you're building skill, just like it would be hard to level up to another level on a game or something like that, with like instead of the sub uh, the mm. you know whatever. I just do want to end on the note that if that is something that is the problem, you can't help them as an editor, as far as that goes, that is a constructive thing that they would need to do research on, like read other people's writing. Like you need to almost like a give them homework to figure out yes. how to do it correctly yes, is, correct. is like almost how I think these should be done. Um, uh, in general, the way people write is so weird. You know, it reminds me of before standardization, everybody made their own gunpowder and bullets and guns. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, why are we doing it like this? Why don't we standardize how to make guns correctly, make bullets of a particular size? Like, it's so weird that everyone is just like, write a book and you'll just have to stumble on all the right things as you go through. The man reached his side, chewing on a blade of grass and eyeing the stretch of harvested land. That's the last of it for today. You done, you've done good work, Tobias. You always do good work. Thank you, sir. The man pulled a small purse from his pocket. Coin. Thank God. Ah, coin. This is the most annoying fantasy trope. No one calls a nickel a coin. The problem with it is it feels indistinct and abstracted and not like a real place. Well, it seems lazy. Yeah, that too as well. <laughs> um, thank God. Uh, I don't understand this. Like, again, he's being kind of whiny here. Um, he's always, he always gets paid, I'm assuming. Is Tobias a five year, five year old? Spe Actually, Why is there a God in this world? Is he, oh God, you don't even, I'll tell you about that. Why else is he complaining? Okay, so I'm going to just unveil this for you. At one point in the book, they mentioned that there is a God. But that's the only time it's mentioned. Bear in mind that in this world, there is someone who has magical powers who rules the country, and it's never explained why she isn't a goddess or why they don't explain. I missed it, and a lot of people missed it the first time. And the author likes to say, like, oh, you can't help it. Sometimes people don't pick things up. No, no, I'm an adult. If you haven't, yeah, you need to explain this properly. Instead, it just feels like they're saying thank God as um, a generic, like, cuss word or or uh, whatever that word kind of a word is called um so but yes there is a god not mentioned a lot the way that it feels is like coin it feels like you just didn't really work very hard on what the culture of your world that's is. so but that's also like again if you are wanting to be an author whether you publish things or not you can't that's not an excuse. You cannot just say, oh, well, you just didn't pick up on it. Absolutely not. That means you, as a writer, just like as a director, mm -hmm. like if a director didn't include a scene that would make some plot point make total sense, then that's because the director effed up and did not show that plot point that was important. 
There was one movie um, I remember seeing. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Holidaysburg. But anyway, in the original version of the movie, there's it's following three different characters as they go home for the holidays, and two of the characters are very similar looking girls who are brunette. And it took all, and it was a problem because a lot of viewers and test screenings couldn't tell until like halfway through the movie that they were different characters because they just kind of looked the same because all white people look the same. So they made an edit so that early on, there's the point where all three characters are on screen so that it's clear to the audience that, oh no, these are three characters. These two may, female characters are not the same character. In you can't go back and complain about people not picking something up in your book. Your work has to stand on its own as a text. And so again, think of the, if the director had just been complaining afterwards that like, oh, authors weren't paying attention or readers weren't paying attention. God, aren't they the worst? Like, that's not how it works. Okay. He cocked his head at the cane in Tobias's arms. Trade, the man tossed the bears to Tobias, who in turn hurled the roll of cane at his employer. Hurled is an aggressive word here. Um, after the guy tossed it. Hur also, Again, hurled wait. is like, I'm mad at you. Okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Logic Heat error. is a better word. Uh, yeah, but also like, so it just said before, he hoisted a whole bunch of sugar cane onto his back. First of all, I have a question. Not that like maybe this is necessary, but does he have all the sugar cane in like a contraption that keeps it together? That is um, actually what I was thinking as well. And then second, but again, that's not crazy important. But then second, it's really heavy um, in general, meaning it is a heavy object. How could you hurl? Hurl is like you hurl a ball. You hurl a pencil. Saying. You hurl something light to someone. Yeah, heaved. And also you could not heave it across. Well, and also you can't do it without all the sugar cane going flying. Like, exactly. So that doesn't make any sense. Somebody is going to complain about us like, oh, you're nitpicking little things. I didn't that is what care. our job is. But yeah. A, it's our job. But B, also it destroys how real the world feels when you have all these small inconsistencies. A lot of times when we talk about big problems in books, it may sound like we're talking about abstracted problems, but we're not. We're talking about a lot of small problems creating um, a feel or a lack of environment. Um, and especially in, a, in the beginning of this book, which is it's an intro focused on the physicality of where Tobias is in this moment and what he is feeling. It's important to get small details like this right and also like it's just bizarre like these are just weird like i would not normally have this an author usually should not have this many problems um also he then says apologies no okay uh, a, a provincial greek man is not saying apologies oh well greek the problem with this apologies provincial. is just as bad as coin it just feels really uh, uh um oh my god abstract. are you serious god this is heavy <sighs> the man positioned the rule onto his back hunching so far forward that his chest was almost parallel to the ground you make it look easy i swear you've turned it into an ox while my back was turned this is so like uh, again <laughs> we are being literally slammed over the head with these points that she's trying to make that i we already know look at that point Keep this. Keep the God. This is heavy man positioned. Blah blah blah. You turned into an ox. Delete also, by the way, positioned again. Abstract. Not an actual discussion. Uh, the man rolled it onto his back. Much better. Again, yes. abstracted language is one of the worst problems with writers. Go ahead. Yes, but just delete all the other like that whole part where it says, um, "Where is it at?" Yanked his sheath. For, okay, he first recalled the weight on his back, how heavy it was. Blah blah. Delete all of that and keep the God, this is heavy. The man that's much better at between the two because mm -hmm. you are not telling, you are showing. Oh, look at you using basic things to correct an author who somehow has thousands and thousands of followers. I, also, I there's thinking? something about this dialogue, and I can't quite pin my hand on it, that makes it feel very dialogue y. Um, and not it's because like it's telling you. Yeah, I think so. I still can't quite put my finger on it. Hopefully I can by the end. Um, Tobias dumped the coin into his hand, counting it. Sir, this is too much. It's a holiday. <sighs> um, that doesn't Katie, seem real. Katie, if I were to send you a card on Valentine's Day, would you go, oh, you don't have to send this. It's a holiday. Or would you say it's Valentine's Day? To answer that question even more specifically, Tobias dumped the coin into his hand, counting it. First of all, 
how the fuck are you going to be saying this is too much? Shut your mouth. Uh, but <laughs> even better, Tobias dumped the coin into his hand, counting it. He frowned. Then the man says, not the holiday part, but says something to the effect of, ah, this is extra for such and such, he said. And you can tell that the frown, like, there's a whole interaction there that doesn't have to be dialogue. But anyway, sir, this is too much. What? Oh, okay, wait a second. What holiday is it? It's the same it's, as it's, birthday. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to be like, is it just holiday? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Again, nobody says, well, you might say happy holidays if you or, are in a corporate setting, but generally you're like, hey, it's Halloween. You want to be like, I'm dressing up for a holiday when it's Halloween. Like, it, again, yet. abstracted and, and in, unspecific. But, so Tobias dumped the coin into his hand, counting it, sir, this is too much. <laughs> uh, go home. Be with your family, he said, tipping his hat. Blessed day. Tobias forced a smile and returned. Blessed day to you. There you go. Yeah, that is a much cleaner. All right. Um, also, what do you mean? His gut told him. I'm reading another part, guys. That his gut told him to deny the handout. What are you doing, Tobias? Are you an idiot? Who says no to holiday money? And also, who cares if it's a handout? I mean, is Tobias, like, originally a very rich person who's very proud? Oh, yes. Um. Okay. That still seems weird. But that is a good, I guess, characterization thing because I assumed it. No, I'm going to complain about it in a minute. I'm just writing something out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this could be Tobias dumped the coin into his hand, counting it. He's also not dumping the coin. He's dumping the purse, whatever. Tobias dumped the coin into his... Also dumped his... <laughs> We're just going to have to keep going, guys. I can't point this out every time. I will never stop. Tobias dumped the coin into his hand, counting it. He frowned and looked up. Sir, it's a holiday, Tobias. Tobias stared at the man down at the coin. He pocketed it. I put put with a swallow, but I actually just like he pocketed it. Notice how that is a much cleaner interaction and doesn't feel as like Kelly. And then um, just thank you, he faltered. I can put in more hours. That says everything. He pocketed it. He thank you. He faltered. He faltered. Oh, you're right. Um, I can't you see what I mean, though? Point. Just connect those two and mm -hmm. you author or not your cut, dang it. Your, uh, your reader. reader will be smart enough to connect that because you've done it well. So there's a thing in writing that I've picked up on actually by reading Sabriel uh, by Garth Nix, which is a book I adored, um, and a couple of other ones, um, a Warhammer book called Eisenhorn, actually, which funnily enough, which is that in silences, readers get intrigued. So you're mm -hmm. kind of intrigued by this interaction. You're not spelling it out. You're like, oh, OK, you're, you're picking up what's going on. Um, and sometimes when you have too much of a character just doing one action and another, you kind of need to like recap or have a thesis statement for all these actions in a row because it's it's kind of difficult for writers. And to it's keep dramatic. Up, new readers to keep up. But yeah, this is a more dramatic dramatic way of doing it it feels more like oh what is going on here i'm intrigued versus i'm just saying all this stuff okay you say that every day <laughs> this is again more telling like we get it also, we get it what do you mean he says that every day if he says that every and but he's complaining so much and as soon as he <laughs> could leave he wanted to leave well remember though he felt dread and relief you say that every day the man repositioned the cane over his shoulder and patted tobias's back i hate that. go home be with your family. Also, why is it called the man? He's worked his with boss. this guy for a while. A lot. No, no, but that's the thing is he's worked with this guy apparently a lot. So why doesn't he know, use his name? And this Very guy odd. right below, right below, he calls him Tobias. So why wouldn't Tobias know his name? Know his Mr. Name. So and so nodding Tobias slid the coin into the purse and pocketed it. Just as he began to make his way from the field, the man stopped him. Tobias, he smiled. Blessed day. Tobias forced a smile in return. Blessed day to you and yours. He continued his, again, we're just going to keep going, even though there are problems. He continued his trek across the field and down the hillside. The coin jingled in his pocket like it was mocking him, so smug in its dominance. And he tried to remember his purpose, to think of why he labored each day, though the thought offered him little comfort. Again, A, you could just literally, like it was mocking him, so smug in dominance. I don't actually like that, but you could then cut out and he tried to remember its purpose. Actually, I do kind of like it like it was mocking. Like, I, I like that idea. No, if but you... so smug in its dominance, delete it. Like it was mocking him is good. Like it was mocking him. Jingled in his pocket. Mocking him is actually mocking even better. Him. Mm -hmm. And again, Mock Andy tried to remember his purpose to think. Like, we got it. We got it. Leave us some, leave us some silences to punctuate so that the sound has more power when it does punctuate it. Also, mocking him implies so much. 
why would the coin be mocking him? Coin inanimate object isn't literally obviously mocking him, but the fact that the coin, what does coin do? It buys you things. Obviously, he's reliant on the coin. It's mocking him. Therefore, he feels offended or hurt or like he's being belittled. I think what it is is that it's like he is, he doesn't like having to work for money, which is like a weird thing that's yeah. kind of annoying. <laughs> It's funny, I didn't notice that, but yeah, this is one of the reasons Tobias is annoying is like he's just very upper class and like, oh, having to labor for money. Wait, can I read this part? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the town materialized at the foot of the hill. The roads were packed with bustling bodies dressed in their finest attire, and Tobias pulled his shirt from around his neck, <sighs> sliding it over his head. Soon he reached the masses. The color and cheer surrounded him. Ribbons in purple, pink, and gold adorned shop fronts spiraled from rooftops and wrapped around columns. White linen stars decorated trees, carts, and doorways dangling from strings in intricate clusters. Then there were the lilies hanging from awnings and spilling from windows, and their perfume scent, excuse you, perfumed scent, overpowered him until he could feel it in the hot, dry air. How many times are we going to be told that the air is hot? Also, he should be cooling down as he goes into the shade. I know. So in terms of the um, construction of this chapter, this is not a bad thing to have here. Um, uh, no, not at all. We are in, We should be intrigued by this point by what's going on. We're not because she's not that good a writer, but anyway. Um, but like, so we should be able to put up with like a paragraph here. This is. These are not great descriptions. Um, finest attire. Abstract. What does that mean? No, one of the things is that Maria, when she was reading this, didn't realize, and actually a lot of people didn't realize, that this was like a Greek-esque setting because, oh. it, it, like, uh, bustling bodies dressed in silk and... Um, Fur. Silk and, <laughs> silk and <laughs> fringed togas. Uh, silk and fringed togas. Their sandals, uh, their leather sandals tied leather sandals. all the way up until the, around their whatever, whatever Greek people wear in the day. Yeah, and also you could even make a note that like instead of saying uh, dressed in their finest attire, you could put something about how like this is the one pair of clothing they keep uh, because like peasants in general would have like their working clothes and their church clothes. So you could say something like unpacked from their careful folding from years in the box, something like that. Again, I, I, I think there's a reason it takes me while. But I get what you're saying. That's um, what I'm saying is that idea you could even put in there and then that gives some cultural nuance to what's going on. Honestly, you know what? I mean, when everybody goes to church, right? And they have their, their good church clothes, right? It's usually the exact same type of clothing, right? So everybody could be wearing exactly the same type of clothing just but it's not the usual clothing that he would see on them here is actually a good example ribbons and purple pink and gold adorned shop shop fronts this is what i'm talking about that is um abstracted whereas spiraled from rooftops and wrapped around columns those are both specific and physical and easy to picture so in this case she did one wrong and two right yeah. um but just to you know white linen stairs decorated trees what does that mean and doorways dangling again How that's about better yeah, instead of decorated trees, how about we're hung from the tips of tree branches on the wheels of carts and across the fronts of doorways, dangling, dangling from could, strings. You could even put something like, and you wouldn't do this because this is a desert, but in a description like this, um, you know, uh, left across them like um, snow in winter or something like that, where you could actually put a good descript uh oh what are those called white linen uh draped the branches like um snow in winter or something yeah, like that similar. or similar yeah like that would this would be a good place to put one of those in to make it like a little bit more um oh god environmental dude okay so everyone in the next line i'm sorry i'm jumping a little but it this is what i was gonna say anyway but then i looked and just happened to notice the problem already existing the town was only this beautiful this alive one day of the year and today was that day P today people feasted celebrated i was just about to say the first thing you smell at a renaissance festival is the turkey legs he, he tobias isn't smelling a specific treat that is given out on this day. Tobias isn't smelling certain incenses maybe that they burn on this day. If it's a holy day, Tobias isn't smelling the sweat, sweaty bodies. Um, he is everyone. smelling perfume though. But the thing is perfumed scent is also, if it's overpowering him, it needs to be a little clearer. Like, is this frankincense and myrrh? Is this um, roses? Is this lilies? I, I think it's the lilies, really right? Mean? 
Yeah, it's the it's supposed to be the lilies. Then there were lilies hanging from awnings and spilling from windows with their perfumed scent over. And it, it doesn't. You, you, by that point in the paragraph, you've forgotten that perfumed means perfumed like lilies. Um, but but that would that would be my. I mean, I technically I think it's okay, but that would be something that in my own writing I'd be like, eh, this isn't quite hitting in the gut. Um, also, instead of perfume scent, describe the smell. Yeah, that's true. Sharp would be a good one, or soft, or I think they're you know, sickly like sweet. I hate so smell describing them. smells is actually very difficult because we're visual animals. I mean, if we were all dogs, we would probably be very good at describing smells. Also, buttholes. But um, you know, this is a thing that's difficult to do. It's pretty limited, but you would try to do something like that. Okay, this paragraph, the tone is only this beautiful. That's all telling. And like, there is a case to be made for some telling. Again, when you want to kind of wrap things, either conclusions or theses, it's okay to tell it. And it's okay sometimes in that kind of staccato I've been describing a lot. Now I'm going to say something. All the description stuff we just said, you know, the foods, the smells, whatever, whatever, the people's attire. Don't put the town was only this beautiful. Delete all of that. Have that paragraph to description and then cut today marked the birth of the savior. I was going to actually say, yeah, literally cut the town was only this beautiful. You've already, your description should be able to give that impression to the reader. Like and then that, when you've done your job properly, they have already picked that up by showing instead of telling. Yeah, because it's a celebratory thing, obviously, with some of these descriptions. And then you jump Today was something specific, a.k.a. known as a holiday. And now we're going to do info dumping. Ready? Mm. The history of the, the Savior. Mm. I don't know why you would have the there, but went back hundreds of years, but every living, breathing citizen could recite it in detail. In centuries past, the realm of Thessin was in a state of turmoil. It was racked with plague, crippled by greed, and immersed in war with neighboring powers, marking death and destruction the miserable norm. As people perished, so did the land, so wrought with disease that the harvest refused to grow, leaving nothing but desert sand for miles. Those who didn't die from sickness starved, and those who didn't starve were killed for their sustenance, creating an endless cycle with only one foreseeable outcome. Sustenance? Eradication. Sustenance? This is a... Okay, so this is just actually something it. good to... <laughs> no, just... Something I see a lot is people who are very bad at info dumping. So we should describe, even if this is not the place for it, and I don't think it is, um, un un undo the delete. <laughs> So again, this I don't think is the place for this. I think this is too early, but let's work on it like if we had, if we were going to leave it here or move it later, okay? Because right now, the problem with this is that it sounds like a textbook. This has no inter... Tobias is not thinking about this and it is not um, specific to his worldview. Even in the past, the realm of Thessin, in centuries past, his realm or something like that. Turmoil, state of turmoil abstract as we've just talked about it was racked that's not how you spell racked um racked has a w excuse you uh it, for those who cannot see it was spelled r-a-c-k-e-d rather than w-r-a-c-k-e-d yeah wait, wait 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 does this book have an editor i was just gonna say did nobody crippled by greed could be something like um uh infested like with merchants or something like that again something that's a little bit more specific and immersed in war with neighboring powers and immersed with war with the wolf soldiers of the east or something like that again these are very unspecific things um and also you need to tie this into what tobias is thinking in this moment why not just simply i feel like so they're all peasants right why is there no artwork showing this oh or god katie why, you're so beautiful why oh. is there not a children's play happening in the background with puppets or something katie have i mentioned how beautiful your hair looks she <laughs> of the golden hair no that is such a good point it's something i've used in my own is like walking past murals of a thing yeah. you're totally right that should be shown through like and different parts of this could have been you know a mural or something on the ribbons or a um a puppet's yeah, like you said, a puppet play going by or children chanting something or, or singing something as they hop. Yeah, and then the thing is, is I don't want, like, it's cool for your world building to know all of this, but you don't need to be telling your reader all of this academia part of your world building. Like, this should be cultural. It should be ingrained in the dialogue mm -hmm. and in the setting. So nobody goes to church and is like, thousands of years ago, Jesus, who was born in Nazareth under the reign of the Romans, had a moment. Actually, I have heard something like this at a church. No, no, no. But you don't think that. Oh, yeah. No, like, no, no. I'm no. going to church. 
Man, that's a pretty stained glass ceiling. I mean, look, you know she, could mean? Have, she could have still info dumped if he, like, is slightly religious, went to church, sat in a pew or whatever the oh. heck their version is, and oh. then literally listened to it. He is not down for any of that savior crap. He doesn't believe in all that stuff. Well, then maybe he needs to see someone who's there, and they're there, and he's waiting patiently and listening to the thing. Or maybe no. it's outside. You're actually entirely right. This is a celebration for the Day of the Savior. This should all be shown through that. Um, if this was on its own, because again, I've seen people who have to describe backstory in this way, I would make it shorter, punchier, more specific to him in terms of the details and the viewpoint. I'll, I'll try to explain that later because it's difficult. It's difficult to describe. I do it in my own writing, but I don't want to be like, hey guys, this is how I do it. Um, but also again, specifically, he needs to have a thought at this. Like he wished it was back in those days or something like that. Or, um, you know, I mean, see, there's a million ways you so different it. from it's it was now. Way. Yeah. You could just put in like, I don't know. So different from it, from, from now. God, this is so, okay. So I'm reading a little bit. Of that, right? <laughs> also eradication doesn't make any sense here. Uh, like destruction or extinction would probably be better. Eradication implies somebody else is going through and doing it. Okay. Go ahead. This next part. I'm sorry. Can I read it? Mm -hmm. Just highlight it. Oh, this is so lame. <laughs> I feel like I can hear the 80s narrator voice saying this. And then she was born, a baby girl with ivory skin and violet eyes. They said her birth was special, that all who saw her knew she would enter darkness. They knew she was the light because light radiated <laughs> through her, setting her skin aglow the moment it caught the sun. Some said her appearance was stunning, that a glimpse would leave people dazed and faint. Others claimed her eyes carried a wisdom, a knowing of her. God, Lord, help me to kit, suck this girl's dick anymore. And I might just like, <laughs> this Again. is a lot. A lot of this would have been better. Uh, you know, another cool thing would have been if um, there were different pictures of her, but the, all the pictures, but the pictures kind of looked different. So maybe like the store owner has one with her with a sickle and hammer, or one of them has her with like flowers in her hair, or she looked more like this or that because cultures, especially in this time period, didn't have Xerox machines. So they would have like, does anybody even know what a Xerox machine is anymore? Or is that just me? So something like that. But yeah, and again, this sounds like it's from a textbook. It doesn't even sound like it's from the Bible. It sounds like it's from a textbook. Right. Also, by the way, you notice how her birth is capitalized? I did. So in the book that's from her perspective, which is the second one, every time, and this is again, third person, she says her or she, it's capitalized. So like each paragraph, there are multiple instances of she and her being capitalized. It is so irritating to read. Yeah, it is. That could be forgiven potentially if everything else was fine. No, it couldn't. Uh, not in the next. <laughs> book. Uh, well, oh, the oh, in the next. Okay, I get it. Yeah, no, that's dumb. Also, why is girls capitalized? Like, I don't this know. girl's birth. Be like that's not a. That's not know. her. It's not like when I say Jesus the man, I don't say capitalized <laughs> man. Also, with this girl's birth came a purge. The lands were restored, turning green when they had once been brown, and the sky brightened to a blue that hadn't been seen in years. That's not a purge. No, it's not. Diseases, Diseases went, extinct. went extinct. This is a fantasy book. Why are we mentioning extinct? I know, I was just gonna say, and the sick were cured, their bodies purified in a matter of weeks. Skeptics became believers, believers became worshipers, and soon all were convinced of the capitalized girl's celestial power, that she was their savior. By the way, notice how at this point you should mention that her powers come from God. And yet, for some reason, they don't mention that here. It's this weird logical lapse. And it's the reason I think a lot of people were like, wait, there's a God? Um, like, right here, it should be mentioned that her powers come from God. Um, like, right, right where it says, uh, so the line where it says, skeptics became believers, believers became worshipers, and soon all were convinced of the girl's God-given powers. There you yes, go. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or that she was the daughter of God, or that God had, like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's not been, in, like, there's no inference um uh, uh, okay uh, okay 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 continue I'm, i can't diseases went extinct and the sick were cured their bodies purified in a matter of weeks you remember how like jesus cured the lepers but that's like a specific thing instead of just cured and purified okay also by the way we have officially run into too much telling this has been one two three and, and it keeps going four five 
There's going to be five full paragraphs. I noticed that before and I wanted to jump off a cliff. An excerpt from Thessian history. Skeptics became believers. Believers became worshipers. And soon we're all convinced of the girl's celestial power. She's a god. We don't need this. Like, what are you talking about? Unless you're talking about like the religious schisms of the era. Like why that this is a dumb paragraph, this dumb sentence to keep in. Because obviously that's what happened. As the realm was cleansed, the savior grew in prominence. The people decided she needed a thorn, so she was crowned the ruler of Thessian, making her will law. Wars ended, evil went punished, and peace recited after years of chaos. In the shortest amount of time, the realm had surpassed its original greatness, and it was out the hands of a little girl. What oh my the god, this is, is dumb. How has she done all this? Is this I magic? Oh, yes, it is. She has magic. But... I am growing enraged at the levels of info dumping here, and it's not even good info dumping. No, wait, 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 wait. It gets better. Today was not that girl's birthday. Today was the current savior's birthday, as there had been many saviors since then. The first savior eventually birthed another girl of her likeness with striking eyes and glowing skin. She too had a daughter who had a daughter who had another daughter as well. Great, so thank you for that. Title passed through each generation, and while it was no said, no two saviors had the same shade of eyes. They all possessed the same luminescent skin and celestial power. More importantly, with each savior, the land was fruitful, peace was upheld, and the realm remained prosperous. The realm remained prosperous. With five massive paragraphs. I'm gonna cry. Um, yes, today okay. was truly a wondrous day, a day for joy, for food and rest. Hold on a second. Pause like in the old editing in the 90s go right back up what did it say right over there uh the town was oh not oh excuse me the town was only this beautiful this alive one day of the year and that day was for feasting and celebrating happy kind generous also by the way you want to know how you could just sum up all five paragraphs she of the violet eyes and the pale skin she whose magic had brought thesson from a wasteland to the kingdom uh tobias had grown to manhood in now Bam. Done. Good. Like, there's so many things that, like, and again, especially if he's going through a market, seeing like pictures of each of the saviors over again, you could he could see like savior this, savior that, who was known as the saint of this or that, and that implies that there have been multiple generations of saviors, or the you know the savior and her daughter, um, which tells you that they have daughters. People or are somebody stupid. saying the tale of so and so, the tale of her daughter, so and so. People aren't stupid. They can infer um, what the savior of a country is like by just saying that she was the god's daughter or something like that. Like, we don't need this many. We can understand that there's multiple of them. It's a hereditary issue. There's, there's no need to spell this out in such agonizing detail. Horrific detail, one might even say. Also, I want to remind everyone what's happened so far in... <sighs> Give me one second. Um... Oh, it was hot. It was Wait, hot. No. Don't forget that. Okay. Word count. We now have listeners and watchers 1,289 words. And of those words, we have gotten it is hot. Tobias is done with the day and he walked into town. And the land worships a savior. And yeah. that's it. <sighs> All right. You read the next part because my, uh, my energy just plunged and I feel my soul dying. Okay. <laughs> Uh, like, all right, here, you can read right. this highlighted port. Like, I literally just felt my energy plunge. I almost, I know I could feel it through the camera. <laughs> okay. Yes. Today was truly a wondrous holiday. A day for joy, for food, and for rest. Uh, wait a second. That's not a complete sentence. <laughs> a day for food, for joy, for rest. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. But not for Tobias. He still worked. He always worked. <laughs> God. Okay, whatever. Okay. Blessed day to you and yours. The phrase repeated around him and he hurried his pace. He hurried his pace. Ugh, sorry. He hurried his pace, put off by the greeting. He headed down an alleyway, maneuvering between stacks of woven baskets, trying to avoid the smiling faces of those fortunate enough to be celebrating. Darting across the stone road, he ducked into another alley, this one empty aside from a donkey and a muttering drunk. Two asses. <gasps> It's a, get it because donkeys are sometimes called asses. Soon the dirt path to his wait, village. Wait, wait, wait. I don't I don't think you understood that joke, Katie, because you didn't laugh. Soon sometimes. the dirt that's because it's not funny. <laughs> it would have been funny without saying that. It would have been like, oh, if somebody came across oh. it. Oh, um, go ahead. or specifically, like why would the drunk be an ass unto himself if he started cursing at Tobias without the mention of the two asses part? It's implied. It's fine. You could also Whatever. put something funny there about the um, 
the drunk possessively keeping his uh bottle from the donkey or something like that you know something where it's you know like more endearing. Kind of a little jokey a little terry pratchett you know what i mean Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Soon, the dirt path to his village was in sight. But just as he escaped the alley, wait a second. <laughs> How can you, everyone, listen, listen to this. He's in an alleyway, right? He's going between woven baskets. Apparently, there's just a lot of woven baskets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. <laughs> Look, this is Aladdin rules, okay? <laughs> Soon. The dirt path to his village was in sight in an alleyway. Yeah, that is weird, actually. But just as he escaped the alley, he stopped. Okay, wait. Ahead of him was the dirt road. It just said that. Oh, okay, anyway. Ahead of him was the dirt road. And to his right, a shop with reddish walls. Why not just red walls? And an open front. Vibrant paintings on pulled canvas lined its countertops and a portly man shuffled through the space. An artist, the most prominent in all of Thessin. He stopped to wipe his brow before looking out at the road at Tobias and a soft smile crept across his face, the kind that held a hint of sadness, of pity. Tobias nodded, then made his way down the dusty dirt road. I don't want to have to stop every paragraph, but here's the thing, guys. Why doesn't he know this guy's name if he's the most prominent artist in Thessin? Bear in mind that Tobias used to be an artist. I cannot visualize this. No yeah, that's. I this cannot is weird... visualize this even remotely. Shuffle through the space. Uh, space is abstracted and not specific. Vibrant paintings on pulled canvas. He should know what kind of paintings they are. They could add a little bit of detail there. And show um, his knowledge about art. Mm -hmm. um, or even be like a little bit shitty about one of them. Like, oh, his breaststrokes. Kind of sucked in that one going. area. Oh. Tobias nodded and then made his way down the dusty dirt road. The two-mile walk... Why do I need to know two miles? The two-mile walk seemed especially long, making the uphill climb more taxing than usual. That doesn't make any... Uh, what the two-mile walk seemed especially <laughs> Finally, long. his home appeared in the distance, small and bland like every other cottage in his village, with plaster walls and hazel thatched roof. It was the very last cottage on the hilltop, and while the track to and from it was inconvenient at best, the view was a worthy consolation. Endless sky consumed his vision, now the color of apricots as the sun disappeared from the horizon. With a grunt, he opened the door of his cottage and made his way inside. So there's also a problem here by that from the fact that we have gotten no real interiority from Tobias and also the beginning part where I was talking about silences, it's been five paragraphs of um, info dumping and another page of just description. There's no sense of who Tobias's character is. He's not having thoughts about the town. He's not having thoughts about the info dumping. He's not having like conversations with people as he's walking by, like saying, hey, yo, what's up to you, dude? Like none of that is happening at this point the smell of boiled something oh come on you've got to be joking me. <laughs> just keep going okay fine <laughs> anyway the smell of boiled something filled his nostrils two women hovered by the fire one older with olive skin and brown hair streaked with gray the other young and slight with a dark braid hanging down her back the older woman spun toward him, wiping her hands down the front of her dress before scurrying his way. She loves that word. Yeah. Well, no, that was scuttling. But apparently everybody in this world moves like bugs. Yeah. Tobias. She pulled. Okay. I'm sorry. That wasn't real. Tobias. <laughs> <laughs> she pulled him close, giving him a firm squeeze and a firmer kiss on the cheek. She grimaced. My God, you reek. Good to see you, too. And I swear, you're as bronze as a Ceres fountain. I don't know where that accent is. I was going to say, you, this became more classical Greece, but more than like, gr like Greek grandma. But yeah, I know. I can't keep an accent. <laughs> she grabbed his chin and examined his face. You must keep out of the sun. Your skin will turn to leather. A consequence of the mo oh god, a consequence of the job, mother. Well, no one told you you had to work today. Tobias dug the coin purse from his pocket and placed it in her palm, folding her fingers over its lining. Blessed day. His mother. Okay, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to talk about dialogue for a minute. We have a problem here where a consequence of the job, again, is this a formal interview? This is, it's not just that this isn't fantasy ish. This is not even how real people talk. You would just be like, yeah, that's the job, mom. Like, or like, that's the job. But anyway, he's also just being kind of like, he, he's being 
bitter without actually being bitter, which is worse. He's just kind of being very flat. She's trying to use the silences thing I talked about here by just taking it from his pocket and placing it in her palm. But you still aren't getting any interiority from him. And at this point, you should be getting some at least. And also his reactions here don't feel like he's interacting with his mother. He's not like sighing or, or he's not even angry. Like that's no. the other thing. He should be he should be having a stronger emotional reaction in some way. Yeah, you know what I would have done, honestly? Can I take a moment? Because I this is like a really important like for me, this would have been a, ter a really important interaction. Part, yeah, that I probably would have rewritten a million times, honestly. Um, so Tobias, my God, you reek. That is so offensive considering that's from his hard work. And that is such a petty comment to make when he obviously would reek when he works so hard for them. He should not say, good to see you too. He should shove her aside and make his way to continue doing whatever he wants to do. Let me tell you, when my or, husband's pissed off and he comes in the house, he does not make eye contact with me. Or he sighs because he knows this is just how his mother talks. It should be one of those two, but it can't be this milk toast. Oh, a con like, uh, good to see you too. Like, first of all, you're not funny, Tobias. And second of all, like, yeah, you're right. The, the, it needs to be a stronger reaction. Based off of how angry he's been and how bitter he's, he doesn't even want to look at smiling faces because he's so bitter during this holiday because he didn't get to partake yeah, in the true. holiday. He would not be even remote. He would be bitter, aggressive, uh, passive aggressive. He'd come in, he would move past her. He probably wouldn't say anything. And then she would continue talking, trying to be nice. And I swear you're as bronze as this. You must step out of the sun. Your skin will turn to leather. Another jab at the fact that he's mere peasantry now. Or, that has to do manual labor. Or she should realize she started out too strong and go, well, you looked as bronze as a series fountain, a, a fine work or something like that. Or you look as bronze as one of the heroes in the stories. Like, exactly. If she realized. Oh, like, oh oops, I, I overstepped there. Never mind. It's good. Like, instead of just re-saying the same like the, the, here's the thing. Yes, the, she was, she's saying the same thing twice. She's it, it's the it's the same like, oh, you're poor now. You shouldn't be poor. I'm going to complain about. Yes, it. and so if she's a shitty mom, she would continue and say the leather comment. If she's mm -hmm. trying to be a good mother, then she'd be like that, and then it would hit him the wrong way because it still does say the same thing. Um, in a way, it's because and it and then uh, instead of a consequence of the job, mother. God, I mean, at that point, <laughs> this is so bad, guys. This is again why this doesn't feel real. This does not feel like a real relationship. And honestly, you need to establish character dynamics so quickly. Again, I like the idea of her starting with my God, you reek him like maybe just giving her a flat look and her being like, but it's okay. You look you look good and or, bronze now, my son. You, like. You, you know what he could say? He could say um, something to the effect, but not so like teenagery. He, he could say something to the effect of like, yeah, I'm just a gross pig, aren't I? <laughs> like, yeah, he could go farther in. If you wanted to be kind of witty, you could have him go, uh, I don't smell as bad as whatever you're making. Like, something yeah, like that would that, be great. Oh even. my God, that would be great. But yeah. not as bad as you're cooking. You should get better at that, mother type of thing what do you have in here uh blah 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 blah, blah. i work yeah, you can hard all like day that. and i come back to this bullshit we've both worked <laughs> we've both worked hard all day but uh i smell better than you're cooking yeah oh god perfect yeah well she's also one of those people who's like oh we have to make self-publishing a better name for itself you should always get an editor because you don't want to seem um unprofessional yeah you have to understand, I'm going to look this up really quickly because I need just half a second break. She has, yeah, 277,000 subscribers. But so they're she probably has... young people. They're probably young people. Well, it's how a lot of it starts. And also her writing tends to be a lot of like 10 more of the worst tropes in books, 10 worst ways to end a book, well, she 10 things no one tells you about releasing. She's <laughs> <laughs> writing with she knows, William. She is infamous on our, our Discord a little bit. No, I, I know. You know. I've seen that in passing. I don't know. I don't like to encourage hate cults or just no. like a certain amount of like... One of my formative writing experiences was uh, a forum called the anti shirtagal Forum, which was all about how Aragon, uh, the book, sucked really hard. And like, I learned a lot of really important stuff there, but you saw this like increasing spiral of people complaining about nothing. Oh, like, I'm so glad I didn't find that because I might have been just like the, I don't know, a mod. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I was so angry with that book series. 
yeah and again i learned a lot of great stuff from it but at a certain point it got like the criticisms of it everybody was kind of trying to outdo each other in the same way that you do everybody's hyped up also there's like a limited amount of stuff because he took forever to release books and so like i don't want to do that but like no. you know we, this is only our like fifth video on her in two years so okay let's try to push through a little bit more because i can feel my energy like lagging that's fine we don't have to finish um, the whole chapter no no we're not going to this is <laughs> <laughs> you don't realize okay, how much more of this chapter. Did you want to? Did you want to read, or do you yeah. want me to read? Tobias dug the coin from his pocket and placed it in her palm, folding her fingers over its lining. Blessed day. His mother wavered, her stare reflecting her competing guilt and gratitude. She cupped his cheek. You're too good to us. Impossible. Oh, continue. Mm -hmm. Tobias peered over his mother's shoulder at his sister who sat beside the fire, stirring a wooden spoon through whatever it was they were to be eating that night. She turned to Tobias, a knowing grin on her day. Blessed day, she cooed. Tobias' eyes widened. You're cooking? She's cooking. His mother scampered to her side and clutched her shoulders. Naomi was a great <gasps> help today. Wait, Very productive. That would have been so funny if he... No, that would have been even better if he had uh, insulted or the smell of her cooking and it was actually the southern... <laughs> <laughs> that would have been so funny. Anyway, continue, continue. And then he had to walk it back and he was like, no, it's really good that you're trying. That also, by the great. way, hey, um, you know a traditionally Greek name? Murray. Naomi. Tobias. Uh, the main female character will be called Layla. Really traditionally, you would really get a sense of place and culture what from these names. What about Stavakimos? Like, or as know. Maria said, we didn't even get an Achilles. I mean, if you wanted to go really Greek, he would be named Nick. Um, and then every other male Nate character in the book would also be named Nick. That's <laughs> Nick. inside reference to my Greek uh, viewers. But cooking, she's that's just cruel. She'll poison us all. Oh, shut up, Tobias. Naomi said, you're one to talk. Tobias chuckled. Naomi was older than him, but only by minutes. Twins weren't common in these parts, making Tobias and Naomi a known anomaly in their village. Anomaly, again, is he a physicist? Yeah. Is he writing a paper? They had the same sharp cheekbones, the same full lips, but their most distinctive likeness was their eyes, large and black like wells of ink. And while their mother argue, argued they were brown in the light, it was surely the darkest shade brown either had ever seen. That's weird. Naomi, Why would the mom art? Uh, okay, continue. Yeah, it's more like, it's, it's fine. It's not great. It's fine. Naomi glanced up at him as if she sensed his staring. Do I look silly? She sat in a wooden chair layered with cushions that lifted her high enough for her to reach over the fire. And though Tobias tried not to, he couldn't help but notice her feet, which were stiff and grayish from lack of use. Perhaps her legs weren't just as withered. Perhaps her, Perhaps her legs were just as withered. This is a very strange way of introducing the concept that she can't use her legs. Yeah. It's it's a little awkward. It's It's, uh, it's a little awkward. He smiled. You can't look silly. You're just like me. Oh, then I must look awful. Okay, so uh, here's the thing. This doesn't really, this feels very, as I call it, Buffy dialogue. Yeah. And that it's a little too jokey without feeling like a real thing people say to each other. It's okay to be a little bit jokey because people in real life do tend to be a little bit jokey, um, especially like, you know, I'm very jokey. You're very jokey. But the ways we talk aren't like this, like zing, zing, zing kind of a thing. What are you looking at? Also, the next paragraph, he navigated his way through the space, weaving around their wooden table and past the crowded kitchen with an acquired agility. I'm sorry. How quickly is he running through his house? Is he like <laughs> parkouring? Like, I don't know. The cottage the was cottage... Go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. The cottage was cramped. A single room functioning as many. I mean, first of all, everybody does that, but whatever. The entryway was a dining room, fairly comfortable for three, and behind that was the sitting room. A lone wooden chair resting atop a faded rug. In the back were three small beds, two on the left and one on the right, as if the division could somehow create the illusion of privacy. Illusion of privacy? It. it didn't? Get rid of it? It didn't. You already said the illusion of privacy. I don't know if you, you're noticing this, Katie, because it's really subtle. But Tobias is a rich kid who is bitter at having to be poor. Like, this is like, I had not realized how annoying this was until I'm rereading this, because I originally read this, like, forever ago. Um, <sighs> this is exhausting to read. I am so glad that I did not do this book with you guys. Oh, God. And the sequel is worse, because the sequel has the problem that its structure is fundamentally flawed, because it's telling the other half of a character's um, point of view of the same events of this book, but she didn't leave herself enough space to say anything new. So you just expect everything to happen that happened. Like there's no new story. There's no like revelations about things going on. Um, and she also can't work out the timing of the emotional beats correctly because she already tied herself down in this book. That's All right. So I think awkward. this is going to be, let me just see really quickly if there's any funny parts to go over. I'm looking to also her mother is saying, or his mother saying reprehensible. 
again, there seems to be no sense of like, hey, this is a fantasy world. And by the way, they also use the word uh, decolletage later, which is like- Stop it! Yeah, which is like, really? We're using we French now? Victorian era nobles. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think this is going to be it. Um, yeah. Would you guys like us to go over another book? Leave that in the comments below. This was weirdly exhausting. I usually don't get this exhausted when doing these, but this was a lot. Man, there's we got so through like three pages. <laughs> well, there's so many fucking pages that are basically like, it was hot, and then all of the savior... that. It was hot. The savior was a god. Hey, his mom and him don't have real emotional interactions. What? That's it. And it took like 80 pages. It's not 80 pages. It's like five. It's interesting going over it because I knew it was really bad, but it's interesting just to really enumerate um, and look at the ways that it is really bad. And again, we didn't even really fix anything. Like paragraph by paragraph, we just started skipping things to get through some of the major points. This would be so much work to overhaul. Like it's so surprising. Oh, she's, it would she's be not so even, much work. The thing is, she's not even a good fanfic writer. And like, I, I, I don't say that to denigrate fanfic writers, but when you're reading, because again, there are some just amazing fanfic writers. Um, but when oh you're my writing God. a fanfic, you're willing to put up with more because you're like, Okay, I want to see the characters smush faces together. And maybe there will be smut later. But like if I read this as like a fanfic of a character I liked or something, I'd be so bored. I'd be More. so bored and I'd be like, this is not good. More importantly, I'm not buying a fan fiction. She is selling this as a product. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You need to get, you, you need to actually set up like likability in the character and interest and intrigue as to what's going on. Yeah, this is bad on even just a sentence to sentence level by the way um i don't think you know but this on audible let me let me are you gonna tell <sighs> me your price no i mean it's a normal priced book which is amazing no i was gonna tell you the length of it saviors uh champion this is 20 hours oh my god and the sequel which is the same events is 19 hours so yeah that is 40 hours of life absolutely truly <laughs> when i say this wasted yeah, it's not good. It's real bad, actually. And you know what? If you have bad writing, but you have somehow created really fun plot and characters, that's and true too. the narration's bad, totally worth it. Same thing. Uh, actually, no. Your characters always have to be lovable for it to be a success um, in some way. Yes, that is the only way Marvel has survived up until this point. Oh my God, uh, I know. <sighs> so there is an extent to which, like, if this was faster paced and funnier and, like, honestly, just faster paced i would be more okay with this because we would be getting through it faster part of the problem is that this is actually just very plotting at this point and tobias is not an interesting or fun character he's just kind of like pissy and rich that's gonna be it for now uh what other books would you like us to take a, a first uh look at the chapter of i i'm not sure how much we want to do this because i don't really want to turn this into a writing channel um i don't no. feel like we necessarily have the authority to be doing that okay um, okay hold on a second i my love, we have degrees in this and we have active experience for several years. I would say, yes, we do. But I understand your point. But um, no, 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 no. But every now and again, special filler episodes, like, for example, the podcast I listened to last podcast on the left, every now and again, they have a side stories episode when one person is missing. And so on those side stories, they talk about several short stories rather than one long story. So there we go. That could be it. Um, well, again, we kind of want to do something where we uh, uh, review each other's writing um, and do like a full like critique like we would in a workshop. And then on 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 uh, on an episode, we would talk about what we each found in each other's stuff and what we liked and what we didn't and kind of give feedback in that way. And so, yeah, I think that would be kind of cool. If you would like that idea, uh, let us know. Uh, join our Patreon supporting. Uh, independent journalism and Maria should be back for uh, next week. So lots of manic hand gestures. Go ahead and say goodbye to our parasocial darlings. Farewell. Goodbye to you, my friends.